financial support for this government. <laughs> I'm pleased to join you here today on this occasion the East African Community Fourth Media Summit. This summit that brings together media owners, chief executive officers of media houses, media executives, publishers, editors and journalists in East Africa is of critical importance to this region in view of the role of the media as a catalyst for integration. Indeed, one of the expected outcomes of this summit uh, is the focus on how to address the information gap on the East African community integration among the stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting whose theme is claiming the next decade, an EAC agenda, comes at a definitive moment in the history of our region when key development milestones are being made to unite the people of the region and raise their living standards and be able to fight poverty real man. In making this assertion, I have in mind the successful implementation of the first phase of the EAC integration, the customs union, the launch of the second phase, the East African common market, and the third phase, the EAC monetary union, whose negotiations are already underway. I forgot to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that I did I carried the keys to my locker in Arusha because I was a member of East Africa Legislative Assembly. <laughs> you will recall that the EAC partner states signed a customs union protocol in 2004, which came into force in 2005 to provide the following, amongst others. Elimination of internal tariffs, enforcement of a customs external tariff and rules of origin, removal of non-tariff barriers, NTBs as we call them, and development and harmonization of the EAC standards. The Customs Union became fully fledged on the 1st January 2010, while the EAC Common Market commenced on the 1st July 2010, following ratification by member states. Under the Common Market, the EAC partner states have committed to operate as a single market in which there is free movement of goods or persons, labor, services, and capital as well as right of, of residence, uh, common taxes, and common trade laws. The single market arrangement has yielded benefits across the region, and to date, inter-regional trade between EAC partner states has uh, increased exponentially. The latest estimates drawn from last year's performance do show a 49% growth uh, since the commencement of the EAC Customs Union in 2005. In 2008, for example, Kenya accounted for 61% of the total intra-Africa and intra-EAC exports. But the share of the other EAC partner states' exports to the region have also increased substantially. Uganda's share has risen from 13% in 2005 to about 20% in 2008, while Tanzania's exports to Kenya rose from uh, uh, some 95.4 million US dollars in 2004 to, can you believe it, $208.9 million in 2007, just in three years' time, an increase of 54.3%. There is no doubt that EAC partner states of Burundi and Rwanda, though recent entrants, have experienced some of the benefits of the successful implementation of our customs union. Ladies and gentlemen, achieving these milestones has not been easy. There have been challenges which we as partner states, private sector operators, civil society, and as individual citizens of East Africa have had to surmount. One of these challenges is the non-tariff measures which continue to pose serious setbacks to the successful implementation of the customs union as it impedes the free flow of goods within the region and escalates customer costs. Instances of non-tariff measures tend to undermine the EAC integration process beyond the economic realm by not adhering to good practice and principles espoused in the EAC treaty, as well as the protocol establishing the customs union and indeed the protocol establishing the common market. 